to me, Tom Osborne is a Husker legend, not for playing at the University of Nebraska, but for being the winningest coach in Nebraska Cornhusker history. For those of you that are too young to know about Tom Osborne, Tom Osborne was handpicked by another great Husker coach, Bob Devaney, after Devaney announced his retirement at the end of the 1972 uh, season. Both these coaches are part of a very small group that retired on top after winning a national championship the year they retired. Now, before we get started here, I want to welcome two new members to the Big Red Country Club in Husker Power and Mr. Make Money. I want to welcome these two, and they will be part of the perks and rewards, including the home ticket giveaway, which is coming up on August 12th for the first two home games of the 2023 season. Now, Tom Osborne coached the Huskers for 25 years, from 1973 to 1997. And he won at least nine games every single year. Uh, and that's back when the schools only played at the most 12 games per year. His most losses of any season was three. And in his last five seasons as a coach of the Nebraska Cornhuskers, Tom Osborne accomplished a 60-3 and three record, winning the national championship three of those last five years and missing a fourth by only two points on a missed 45-yard field goal against Florida State. So the remarks I always hear is Coach Tom Osborne wasn't that good. Nebraska's never been that good. They played in a weak conference, they couldn't compete in the SEC, and they definitely couldn't compete in the Big Ten. So I kind of broke it down, and we're going to see, could Tom Osborne have won if he was coaching in the Big Ten or the SEC? And I'm also going to throw in the Pac-12. Could he have won in the Pac-12? We already know he was part of the Big 12 and the Big 8 and that, so... We know what he accomplished there. So I've been hearing for years that Nebraska just doesn't get any good players because Nebraska's in the middle of nowhere and none of the great players are going to want to go to the middle of nowhere. So if you really thought about this and you've asked some of the coaches back in the time, I bet you if you asked Florida Steve Spurrier or even Tennessee's head coach Philip Fulmer at the time, what they would say if Tom Osborne could coach in the SEC or the Big Ten, or the Pac-12, they'd say, oh yes, definitely he would have. Even Nick Saban would tell you today, yes, Tom Osborne would compete in the SEC, the Big Ten, or anywhere else in the country he coached. As Nick Saban is 0-2 against Tom Osborne, losing twice, both by a combined score of 105-24. to So, Tom Osborne was also 2-0 against Lou Holtz and 1-1 against the great Paul Bear Bryant. So let's take a look of how well Tom Osborne would have been in the Big Ten, the SEC, and the Pac-12. So I want to start with the Pac-12 and kind of work my way up at where the Huskers currently sit in the Big Ten. Now to keep this simple, uh, and to compare it to the teams of today, we are going to use the teams in the conference they were officially in at the end of last season. So you could see how well Tom Osborne did against your favorite coaches of today. So what kind of record do you feel Tom Osborne would have had against the Pac-12? Would he have won? And how well would he do today. Well, his record against the Pac-12 going through game by game through his coaching career was 37 wins 
and three losses for a winning percentage of 92.5%. That's right, 37 wins and three losses. With the three losses coming against only two teams, the UCLA Bruins and the Washington Huskies. He lost to UCLA once and Washington twice. Other than that, Tom Osborne won and won decisively as most games were not even close. Not bad for a man coaching in the middle of nowhere, wouldn't you say? So what about the SEC? How well would he did to the SEC? How well did he do against the SEC? I'm sure he didn't do as well against the almighty SEC, did he? Well, going back through, Coach Osborne racked up a record of 36 wins, five losses, and one tie for a winning percentage of 86.9%. And again, most games he won were not even close. Now, to put this in perspective, as I said, I'm using the conferences these teams sit at during the end of the 2022 season. Because of this, out of Tom's five losses against the SEC, one loss was from Alabama. The other four were from Missouri, while Missouri was playing in the same conference as Nebraska. So if you take Missouri away, Tom Osborne had only one loss against the SEC. And that was against Paul Bear Bryant's Alabama team, where both Tom Osborne and Bear Bryant won their home game against each other in a home and home game uh, within a two year span. Now, before you start spatting and laughing that Tom Osborne lost four times to Missouri, keep in mind that his win total against Missouri was 21. He was 21 and four, which is an 84% average. And again, most of them games were not even close. And you could see that against the SEC and the Pac-12 combined, Tom Osborne's record was 73 wins and eight losses with one tie for a winning percentage of just under 90%. So I think Tom Osborne would have done just fine and maybe even better than most people think if he coached in either of those two conferences. Now I know a lot of you are probably saying, well, that's not the Big Ten. And some people think the Big Ten is the best conference. Some people think the SEC. Let's now go to the Big Ten now keep in mind, I know the USC and UCLA are officially becoming members of the Big Ten come next season, but they currently sit in the Pac-12, and last year they were in the Pac-12, so I actually left them two teams in the Pac-12 when I did this. Now, I'm not doing this because you're thinking, oh, Tom Osborne must not have done so well against USC and UCLA, well, it's actually the opposite. Against USC and UCLA, Tom Osborne was 6-1. and one. So trust me, including them would make the winning percentage even higher against the Big Ten than without them. So how well did Tom Osborne do against the Big Ten? Well, Tom Osborne was 22 wins and five losses. He was 22 and five against the Big Ten. And if you do want to include USC and UCLA, that would make it 28 and six. But I'll leave it out on this. So we'll leave it at 22 and five for this video, which makes the winning percentage against the Big Ten at 81 and a half percent. Now true, 81 and a half is the lowest of the conferences. So the Big Ten did fare well, a little better against Tom Osborne, but I'll take 81.5% every year. If you figure out 81.5% of a 13 or 14 game season, that's 11 wins every year. 
So I think Tom Oswald would have done just fine in the Big Ten and in any conference he coached in. So with the Big Ten added in there, this gives Tom Osborne a winning percentage of 87.6% against the top conferences in the country with a record of 95 wins, 13 losses, and one tie. So again, I think we all can be sure that Tom Osborne and the Nebraska Cornhuskers would have done much better than okay if he coached in these conferences. Not too bad for a school I keep hearing is out in the middle of nowhere and no one wants to go to. So if no one really wanted to go there, then how well and how good could Tom Osborne be then? That means he's taking not so good of players and winning at almost an 87, 88% with not very good players. So what would he have done if he did get good players? Now, does this show you how great Tom Osborne was? Does this change anybody's mind? Do you now feel Tom Osborne could coach in the Big Ten or any of these conferences and win? Let me know down in the comments below. And I think if you're telling me he wouldn't do well, then you're kind of lying to yourself and the rest of us. Also, Tickets to the September 16th game against Northern Illinois and the September 23rd game against Louisiana Tech will be given away on Saturday, August 12th to one of the Big Red Country Club members. And if you'd like to become a member and be part of this drawing, just click on the join button right next to the channel name below this video to become a member. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and give a thumbs up as this will help get this video out to other college football fans. And if you'd like to support the channel by leaving a small tip, please click on the thanks button you see right here. And I want to thank everyone for all their support and all their kind words as I do receive a lot more nicer and respectful comments and messages than I do not. So I want to thank all of you for all your support. Go Big Red.